Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we will be discussing about the topic Array List Class. Array List Class of Java is used for creating or storing elements dynamically. Dynamic, dynamic means there is no limit in size. It is similar to an array, but its size is not limited. We can add or remove elements whenever we need. It is found inside the package named java.util. So whenever we need to make use of RLS in our program, we have to import java.util package into our program. It can have duplicate elements also. There is no limit in such cases. We can have one element any number of times in our list. It is one of the class that implements list interface. We have seen or we have discussed about list interface in the previous class. There are some classes that implement this list interface. One class among those list is ArrayList. So ArrayList is actually a class that implements list interface, which means all the methods inside list interface has got an impl implementation inside this ArrayList class. It maintains an insertion order, but it's not shown outside. It is it maintains it internally. This figure shows the hierarchy, so that we can clearly understand where the class array list is located. This is one of is part of the diagram that we have seen in the previous video lectures. We know that iterable is an interface. Collection is also an interface, and list is an interface that extends collection so all these three are interfaces and ArrayList is actually a class that extends list interface in between these two we can see abstract list which is also some of the important points that we have to keep in mind when we deal with ArrayList class are first of all ArrayList can contain duplicate elements it maintains an insertion order, the order in which the elements are inserted into a list. It is maintained internally. Random access is possible because array list permits us to access elements based on index. It is similar to array, only difference is it is dynamic. So like we access elements inside an array, we can access the elements inside an array list by using index. The index always starts from zero. But manipulation in array list is little bit slower because when we remove one element from array list, a lot of shifting has to take place. So in that case, the manipulation will be little bit slower when we compare it with the linked list class of Java. These are the most important points that we have to keep in mind when we deal array list class. How to create an array list? So we just now saw that array list is a class so to create an array list we need to create objects of this class and for creating objects we need to use constructors there are three constructors for this class they are mentioned here the first constructor without any parameter when we use this constructor to create an object it will be creating an empty array list the second constructor requires one parameter that is if we have already a collection with us if you want to create an array list based on that collection we can use the second constructor so suppose we have collection means what so collection means a group of elements group of objects we know that in terms of java collection is actually an interface all the classes all the other interfaces which implements or extends the collection interface are said to be a collection for example, list is a collection, linked list is a collection, array list is a collection because all these classes and interfaces are derived from the interface collection. So all those interfaces or classes or both which extends or implements this collection and interface are said to be a collection itself. So if you have an existing collection, if you have one collection with us, if you want to create an array list from that collection we have to create the object of RLS class by using this constructor. Here this constructor requires one parameter that is the existing collection from which we want to create the RLS. So in this case, 
the new RLS will be initialized by the elements inside the collection that we are mentioning as the parameter here. The third constructor is RLS and as you can see we have to specify one integer number here. So this parameter represents the size of the RLS. Even though RLS is dynamic, we can create an RLS with an initial size. Say I want to create an RLS of size 10 initially. Later on, when we add or remove elements, that size will get changed. It may reduce or it may get increased. But initially, I want to create an array list of a specific size. In that case, I can make use of this third constructor. So these are three different constructors available inside the class array list. So clearly, it is, it is constructor overloading. There is more than one constructor with different parameter list. How will we define a class in Java? A class is a collection of methods and variables that those methods make use of, isn't it? So since RLS is a class in Java, this class has got a, a collection of methods, a group of methods within that class. Some of the methods inside the class are listed here. Void add int index comma e element. From the name of the method itself, it might be clear to you people that is, it is for adding an element to the array list. So, if we have a list already and we want to insert a new element at a particular index, then we can make use of this method. This method requires two parameters one is the index, that is, location at which we have to insert the new element, and second parameter is the element that we have to insert. So, when we call this method, we have to pass two parameters and the element that is specified as second parameter will be inserted at the index specified as the first parameter. Then if you want to simply add an element, there is no need to specify any location and all. We don't have to insert an element uh, into a particular location. Then we can make use of this add method. So here the return type is boolean. That means if this method was able to insert an element into the list this method will return true but here the insertion takes place at the end of the list because we are not mentioning an index number here we are only mentioning the element to be inserted so this method will insert the element to the end of the list then we have clear method this method is to remove all the elements from the list to clear the list get in the index as the name indicates it is used for to get some elements from the list. So here we have to specify the index number from which we have to retrieve the element. So if you call this method by using an integer number, this method will return the element located at that particular index that we specified as the parameter. Then if you want to check whether the list is empty or not, because since it is dynamic, if we keep on removing the elements from the list, at a particular point of time the list may become empty. So if you want to know whether the list is empty or not, we can make use of this method that is is empty. As you can see the return type is boolean that means if the list is empty this method will return true otherwise it will, it will return false. Similar to add we have remove that is if you want to remove a particular element from the list at a given index we can make use of this method remove. As you can see the return type is e that means the element that is removed will be returned and we can specify the index location from which we have to remove the element so this method will remove the element from the specified index and that method will that element will be returned that is why the return type is mentioned as e why here it is mentioned as e because we can create array list of any type right we can create array list of string array list of integers array list of floating point numbers are a list of objects of say, a class so that is why we are mentioning it as e it can be of any type now if you want to replace a particular element at a particular index then we can make use of set that is suppose I have a list consisting of 10 elements I have to replace the fifth element that is already I have an I have a fifth element I have to replace that in that case I can make use of this set method Again, set method has got two parameters, they are index and element. So this method will replace the element 
at this index with this element. We want to sort the list. We can make use of the built-in method sort that is inside the array list class. If we want to sort it in a particular order, we can mention that here. Okay, we can specify the comparator by which we have to compare and sort as the parameter for this method. Then this method will sort the elements based on the comparator that we have specified. We will see an example of using array list. As mentioned earlier, array list is inside the package named util. So I have to import that. Import java.util.star. Star represents everything inside the package util. Then creating a class, starting the main method, and here comes the list. Array list of string type. Array list string. List is equal to new array list of string. So here we are creating an array list. Its name is list and its type is string. Then we are making use of the add method to add the elements into the list. And then if we print the list, only the name of the list is required, then in that case we will be getting the output as all the elements inside the list will be printed. And you can see how it is printed. It is printed within a pair of square brackets. I hope we have one more example. In this example also we have used the add method. We have imported the util package, created the list, used the add method to adding elements to add elements into the list. Instead of printing the elements or instead of printing the list within a single line or by using a single line of code, we have used a for each loop. So here for string fruit colon list. So here the variable fruit will take each element inside the list one by one. During each iteration, this variable fruit will be pointing to each element inside the list. So initially fruit will be pointing to mango. So when we print it, we will get mango. Since it is print ln, it will be going to the next line. During next iteration, fruit will be pointing to apple. So we will get the output as apple. So similarly, it will be going till the end of the list. So this is an example of accessing an element inside a list by using a for each loop. You have to take care of this for each loop because we have not used any index number here. We have just mentioned the variable, that's all. If you want to use the index number, we can make use of the different methods available inside the ArrayList class. In both these examples, we have used only the method add. Similar to these two me these me this method, we can use all the other methods inside the ArrayList class also. We shall conclude now. In this video lecture, we discussed about the ArrayList class in Java. We also came across some of the constructors that can be used for creating objects of this class. Since it is a class, there will be some methods and we have seen some of the methods that are commonly used from within this class. And we have seen some of the examples also. I hope it is clear. That is all in this video lecture. Thank you so much.